What's up guys, my name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and today we're going to be going through a really useful feature for OBS. Now of course, if you've ever used something like NVIDIA Shadow Play, then you're probably used to this feature where you press a honkey and the last 5-10 to 10 minutes of gameplay is automatically saved onto your disc for you to go back and look at. Of course, this is very useful if you'd like to be recording 24-7 so that you can pick out any moments that happen when they happen and you don't miss them. Though, of course, in order to do that with OBS previously, you'd need to go ahead and record literally all the time and then chop it up and delete it as you like. But of course, OBS have added a feature somewhat recently, not exactly sure when, but basically you can turn it on and you'll get this nice little option over here saying start replay buffer. As soon as this is checked, you'll be recording exactly what's on the scene over here including text, webcams, etc, etc. And then as soon as you hit a hotkey, it'll be saved and dumped onto your hard disk. Though this does function a little bit differently to the NVIDIA Shadow Play and other software like it, but we'll be getting there in just a moment. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and disable this, and then I'll get to enabling it and the little quirks that I mentioned earlier. So starting up OBS, this is what yours will look like. You'll have a start streaming button, start recording, studio mode, settings and exit. You won't see that replay buffer option over here. What we need to do is simply open up the settings window as such and then head across to the output tab. Then if you have it in advanced mode like me, you can go ahead and customize your recording settings to be exactly how you like, audio, and then we'll head across to the replay buffer tab. Then you can simply check enable replay buffer and we can set a maximum replay time. Now over here we have estimated memory usage and this is going off of the bitrate that's defined under recording as well as the audio bitrate over here, I'm quite sure. Whether they actually include the audio bitrate in the estimate, I'm not exactly sure, but whether it is or isn't, video will still probably take up far more space. So I have mine set to 300 seconds, which of course is 5 minutes. And as you can see, it'll take up 2.1 gigs. Now of course, depending on whatever recording settings you have, I record absurdly high, yours will probably be far smaller than this. Though there's one thing that you need to keep note of here, estimated memory usage. This little keyword over here is absolutely crucial to this working properly. Now, Shadowplay and other software basically record whatever's on your screen 24-7 straight to your hard disk and they go through and schedule previous pieces for deletion and they're continuously recording onto a future piece and it keeps rolling like that on your hard disk. Here, however, with OBS, this is recording into your memory, i.e. your RAM. And I'll show you exactly in a second what this looks like. Now, of course, because I have my recording settings absurdly high, this estimated memory usage over here is also equally as high. If I were to go ahead and open up Task Manager, head across to the Performance tab, you'll see that I'm currently folding. But down here by memory, you can see I have 64 gigs available. So I have more than enough space to go ahead and record into my RAM and then dump it out to the disk whenever I press a certain hotkey. Now we'll get there in a second. So make sure that you have tons of RAM left, both for your game and for this replay buffer over here. That is incredibly important. Make sure this doesn't go higher than you'd like OBS taking up on your PC. Now, if you're stuck with about 8 gigabytes of RAM or possibly less, then this is probably not going to be a good option for you unless you're recording at a much lower bitrate. Now, of course, you probably will be recording at a much lower bitrate, though just keep that in mind. This over here is pretty accurate. Then if we were to go to simple mode, you'll see this little option down here, enable replay buffer. As soon as we click this, we'll be able to pick a replay time. And of course it says 20 seconds, 36 megabytes. If I set it back to 300, you can see it'll take up about 500 megs. Now, why is that? Well, that's simply because it's actually recording at a much lower bitrate, i.e. same as stream. But of course, I like having it in advanced mode so it does take up quite a bit more space, purely because I like recording with more quality. Now, if you have a question about audio tracks and the rest recording, it's exactly the same as your actual recording over here. And in fact, while the replay buffer is running, you can also record your screen. So either way, now that we know how to turn it on, simply hit apply and OK. And all of a sudden, the button is visible here. Of course, if it isn't, simply close out of OBS and reopen it. I'll go ahead and click this button to start the replay buffer. What does this mean? Well, it simply means that we can no longer go ahead and edit our video settings and it'll start recording into our RAM, which you'll slowly see this increase over time. Though I'll head across to Processes and I'll expand OBS over here so you can watch this counter slowly rise. It's at about 430, 440 megs now. So that number will steadily climb until about 2 gigs plus whatever OBS is actually using. 
purely because that is what we have set under replay buffer. Now, of course, you have to actually click this button to turn this feature on. Without this button on, where it says stop replay buffer like this, you won't be able to save the last however much time because it hasn't actually been recording. Now that it's been running for some time, you can see it's taking about 700 megs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button over here. That'll save the replay to our hard disk. I'll click it and it'll be saved. And if I were to go ahead and open up my recordings folder over here, we have a new video and it has replay followed by the date .mkv, same format. If I open it up, you'll see our video over here. And of course, if I open up the audio track options, I have my output one, two, three, four, and microphone. They're the different audio tracks, my microphone, PC sound, and Discord sound. And it's about 500 megs, which makes sense because this is about 700. OBS is using probably 150. Either way, now that we have this feature on, how exactly do we dump out the last five minutes or whatever we've set it to without having to tab into OBS and click this little button over here? Well, simply head across to settings, head across to the hotkeys section, and we search for replay. We'll see start replay buffer, stop replay buffer, and a new option for replay buffer, save replay. Now, of course, I've got this set to alt numpad minus so that I don't hit it by accident, but it's there for quick access when I need it. Once you have this set up, you can simply just press that key at any time. You'll see your disk usage jumps nice and high, and that video is currently being saved to your disk. Boom, there we go. The last five minutes have been saved. Now, of course, I haven't been recording using this for more than five minutes. So you're probably wondering, now that I've dumped it out twice, one at probably a minute and one at three minutes, is that first minute included in both? Well, if I open up my recordings folder over here, double click on it, you can see the time in the bottom right is 2249. And this is what my screen looks like. But if I go ahead and double click on the other video over here, you can see it already looks quite different. Let me reposition this. The time is 2251 and we're at a different timestamp. So that first bit of video is not actually dumped out to the disk as you might expect. Simply keep that in mind if you're gonna dump out things one after the other. But of course that can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. You'll simply need to stitch two of them together if you press the button, though that does make syncing them up a lot easier as when one ends, the other one begins. Super simple. Then of course, when you want to turn off recording, as soon as you click this stop replay buffer button, your RAM usage will suddenly drop back to normal. It's at about 760 right now. I'll click this button to turn it off and you can see it immediately drops down to 100 megs. Looking across at my performance tab, you can see it made almost no impact on my RAM. Now, of course, because I have so much RAM, I'm able to record at such a high quality. I could probably even save even the last half an hour if I wanted to. Though, of course, that's a bit extreme. For most people, if you're running more than eight gigabytes of RAM, then you're probably more than welcome to use this feature and possibly even with higher qualities like I am maybe 40 megabits, etc, etc. Either ways, that's all for you to experiment with. This is how you turn it on and that's how you use it. The weird quirk was simply that it records to your RAM first and not straight to your disk. So with all of that out of the way, that basically concludes this video on the replay buffer. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully you learned something and found this video useful and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.